Adrian Beltre video, can driving Miss Daisy, <laughs> oops, I mean the ball, be this simple? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about the joke. This is Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab, and in this Adrian Beltre video, I'm going to show you how easy it can be to drive the ball just by repositioning the back leg during the final turn. We're going to be using Adrian Beltre's swing as a model, and we're going to go over the following three things. Number one, Adrian Beltre, pitch plane mastery. Then number two, we're going to talk about the role of the back leg during the final turn. And then number three, the number one fix to the back leg angle. But first, let's go over and talk about Adrian Beltre, pitch plane mastery. So there's four factors that determine how efficient a hitter is at getting on the plane of the pitch. Watching Adrian Beltre here hit a 95 mile an hour fastball, factor number one is landing on a bent knee. So we see Adrian Beltre landing on the bent knees, getting lower or getting shorter, and then what we're going to see is him switch the back knee goes to bent where the front knee will straighten. This angles us up towards the downward trajectory of the pitch. The third factor has to do with how soon that barrel gets onto the plane of the pitch. So you can see the blur of the bat is going down and forward towards that catcher's glove. So he's getting on plane early and then he's going to stay on plane super long as he extends out with both arms. Now Adrian Beltre has a below average ground ball and K percentage and above average home run to fly ball ratio whereas most of the hitters that I first get this is reversed. So we want to figure out how to get on that pitch plane a little better with that back leg. So let's take a look at the role of the back leg during the final turn. The next three statements from Homer Kelly in his book, The Golfing Machine, have as much to do with hitting as they do with the golf swing. The first one is the slant is up in the direction of the straight knee. So right here we're landing bent, which was going to slant us up and back over the catcher. But when we go into our bend with that back leg, it's going to slant us up towards the downward plane of the ball. The second part is the slant of the hips affects the degree of hip turn. So as you can see with Adrian Beltre is that here at contact, he's got a great angle here. It's about 109 degrees, but what's going to happen is you can see that hip move back a little bit to counterbalance. And obviously this is past contact, but what I like to have some of my hitters do is actually bring this back foot up a little bit so that we can maintain this angle with the leg so that we keep that back hip forward. The last thing is that the primary function of knee bend is to maintain a motionless head during the stroke. So we can have forward head movement up to landing, but once landing happens, we bend this back leg and straighten the front one in order to keep that head motionless. So now let's go into the number one drill to fixing a faulty back leg angle. Here's a back foot variance drill. I'm gonna add a video link to a little bit more in-depth explanation of the art of variance in which this drill is derived from. Now, as you can see, the marker set up here I have two yellow dimple balls. This back one is placed inside the back foot closer to the plate out of harm's way. And the baseball bat is laid down on the ground and the front marker is placed two baseball's lengths in front of the bat. These two markers you see here are placed about a baseball's lengths apart. The question remains when hitters start to work this drills, they tend to jump the back foot too far or not enough like Adrian Beltre. So I've put these markers here to show you the slant in the hips or the bend in the knee, how it affects the degree of hip turn. So let's take a look at when I just stay with the back one, which is you can see this marker here. Here's where my foot jumps to the middle one. You can see where the hip moved a little bit more here. With the farthest marker, you're going to see that my hips are actually going to move forward a lot more, obviously, because the back leg's coming with me, but it actually goes up. So this isn't a good thing because then it brings us up on the pitch plane. But we want to make sure that when that foot skips, that it skips at the same time as the final turn. I hope you guys learned something in this video. Make sure we're swinging smarter by moving better.